builds. One of the most important aspects of any Total War game. Which units you choose to bring to the battlefield, how they work together and how they work against your specific enemy all come into play when building your army. It can even be the case that if your army is so badly built for the enemy, then you've lost before it's even begun. Now before we get into it, it would be much appreciated if you could support this channel by watching the next minute of the video as I try a little something out. Just a little product brought to you by the Light Wizard and Ben Q. Although it's mostly Ben Q. So have a gander because you never know, you might just find it useful. So Ben Q approached me in the street and threw something into my beard and said check this shit out. What I pulled out of my beard was a screen bar e-reading lamp which basically is a lamp that sits atop your monitor, coming with three main purposes. A, well, it's a lamp. It'll illuminate your desktop an ample amount. B, it'll help support your eyeballs by providing a sufficient amount of light, reducing the strain that can come with staring at screens for hours on end, something I do worry about. And C, it's a good space saver. If you don't have a lot of room on your desk, this will sit right out the way on top of your monitor. And it's built in such a way so that the light goes straight down and hits your desktop surface below and doesn't bounce off your monitor giving you horrible screen glare. It's USB powered and has a few little button features. Starting with a power button, incredible innovation. There's also an auto button which will set the light for you automatically using a sensor to read the light in the room currently and then providing you a sufficient amount. There's also a color temperature button so you can make the color of the light warmer or colder and a brightness button. So there you go, the BenQ screen bar e-reading lamp. If you're in the market for some kind of light source, do check out the links in the description. Now, to the building. So why is a bad build so dangerous? Well, example time of course. So here's me Norskans, a fairly small army, fairly simple. The plan is just to rush up on these rat boys and smash them with mammoths and werewolves. So fairly straightforward. And as for my opponent, well, he couldn't be committing more noob mistakes if he tried. This poor fella has got three expensive ranged units, two expensive artilleries, and they're all pretty close together, so they're really just asking for it. So clearly, this guy is just new to multiplayer, or maybe he thinks he's playing campaign where this might work. Although his cardinal sin here is that he's protecting all this with Skaven Slaves. God damn Skaven Slaves. They of course have absolutely no hope of defending all of the money he's poured into those ranged units. So they're going to be very vulnerable very quickly. So as you can imagine, this battle only really ends one way. Now, the underlying problems with his army actually begin before the battle even started, on the army selection screen, where he's clearly given no thought to two important factors. Who is my enemy and how are my units going to work together to defeat that enemy? When you look at Norska, you can be pretty sure of their game plan to some degree. They are going to come at you and try to smash you straight away. They are a rush faction. They are going to be on top of you quickly, they'll give your missiles and artillery no time to fire, and you'll have a hard time protecting them all. So don't bring tons of ranged units. That should be the go-to thought when seeing these kind of rush factions. And your units need to work together to help each other do damage and to survive. Hence Skaven Slaves not being able to protect ranged units. Here's another poor fella coming out as the Tomb Kings. He's facing off against my Greenskins. Again, another rush faction that probably isn't going to give you much time to fire. Yet, still, he has four units of archers, three Screaming Skull catapults, and a casket of souls. Probably far too much ranged whichever way you slice it, but definitely far too much against a numbers-heavy faction like the Greenskins, who again are going to rush you. A poor choice of strategy to go heavy ranged against a rush faction and a poor choice of units not having enough to protect all that ranged, let alone the ranged being too much itself. Now I will go as far as to say, you can potentially build an army so badly, it will be impossible to win. Nothing you can do will give that army an advantage enough to be able to win. This can be a combination of poor decision making and just bad luck potentially. Ultimately, these armies come down to one major flaw. They are quite simply one dimensional. They're strong in one aspect of their game, but all the rest are weak as scheisse. So in the case of a ranged heavy army, they might do well against other ranged heavy armies that are trying the same thing. Maybe they'll be able to win against that, but everything else they'll probably get messed up by. Their army simply isn't well rounded enough to deal with everything their enemy faction could potentially do to them. And that is what we need to be building for. 
Honestly though, overall, it's really knowledge that we need more than anything of the units and of the factions. That of course is going to take some time. But for now, pick your favourite faction and try to learn them. That's all I can suggest to get you started. And then we just need to follow one simple rule. Your army must, 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 must be adaptable. It needs to be able to deal with any game plan that the enemy faction may throw at you. This involves playing to your strengths, playing to the enemy's weaknesses, whilst making sure they're not going to be able to do the same to you. So you've got to think about the units that you're selecting and how are they useful to help your army win against the particular faction that you happen to be facing. Starting with Lords and Heroes. What kind do you want to bring? Melee experts, casters, are they going to be vulnerable to the enemy faction? Do you want them to support your army or to do damage? What about your front line? Do you have a strong front line generally or a weak one? Is the enemy's likely to be stronger or weaker than yours? Do you want it to just hold out for a long time or to do damage? What about the mobility of your army? Do you have enough of it? Is it going to be effective? All the cav, the skirmishers, the flying units, anything that's mobile, how can we use that against the enemy? And what mobility might the enemy bring against me and how am I going to deal with that? The ranged units, do they have any? Do I have any units that are particularly vulnerable to it? How am I going to protect them? What about your magic and abilities? How are those going to support your army or take out the enemy army? What is the enemy going to bring to use against you magic and abilities wise? What kind of monsters and large can I expect? Do I need to prepare for them? How am I going to deal with them? Does the enemy have a hard time dealing with single large monsters? Should I bring one? Should I bring two? Fuck it, should I bring three? These are the types of questions you should be asking yourself when building your army to face the enemy. How well are they going to do against the specific faction you're facing? And what are they likely to try and do to you? It's about building an army that can deal with most, if not all, possible combinations of units and builds that the enemy may throw at you. Now, let's say we build an army that is ranged heavy, like one of the ones we saw earlier, a bit one-dimensional. Whatever faction it is. Let's say they're facing the Vampire Counts, and they've got 10 different army possibilities that they could bring against us. We don't know which one it's going to be though, so we got to do our best to be able to deal with them all. How well is this ranged heavy army going to be able to do that? Well, let's say it can only really beat one of those armies. All the other ones will mess them up. Maybe it'll get two if it's lucky, but for the most part, this one dimensional army isn't rounded enough to deal with all of the vampire threats, and thus it can't beat most of the armies that may come its way. Okay, so now let's say we've got a more average well-rounded build. It's not bad, but it's not great. That has much better chances of beating more of the vampire armies that could come its way. We'll say 5 out of the 10, so it's got 50% chance of not being severely disadvantaged at the start of a battle, or advantaged for that matter. But what if we have a well-built, adaptable army that can deal with any kind of vampire build that they throw our way? Except maybe one, because no build is perfect, there's always the chance that the enemy may just bring the perfect army to deal with yours, and that's just bad luck. But the more well-built and adaptable your army is, the less percentage chance there is that you're going to end up starting the battle at a severe disadvantage. And if you build your army well enough, you may even have the advantage, making it a lot easier to get that win if you play well. Your army should be able to fight competitively against any enemy army that it may face. If you can do that, you'll avoid those impossible win situations through bad building. Allow me to give you some examples. So, as a man of the green skin, here is a build I often use against the Empire and some other ranged heavy light armor kind of factions. Every single unit in this army is chosen with a purpose in mind to aid me in taking down the Empire, and it can deal with anything they can throw at me. Now for my front line, I've just got Orc Boys. These are great against the Empire because the Empire don't have great front lines, so Orc Boys with the war on will do plenty of damage and take out most of their front line troops, except for great swords and they have a shield. Nasty Skulkers, great for adding a bit of armor piercing damage or their smoke bombs to try and catch some of their large units like Cavalry or Karl Franz on Deathclaw. And then I've got the Eight Peak Loonies, great for pressuring ranged units as they are unbreakable and have a silver shield so they can just push on and try to disrupt missiles. Then I've got one unit of Biggins who can help deal with some Cavs, they're anti-large or they can double up to take out some infantry. And for a little bit of ranged, I've got some rusty arrows who have armor sundering, so that's great for trying to whittle down things like Karl Franz or any big lords. And I'll often combo this unit with nasty skulkers and their smoke bomb to hold things in place while the missiles blast away at them. 
And then I've got a whole lot of cavalry, which I like to bring in from one side, left or right, and I simply overwhelm one flank where the enemy most probably won't have enough to stop me getting round. I'll be able to get behind their front line, pressure their missiles, and do all kinds of horrible things to them. And then I've got a little bit of skirmish cab who can do many things. They can harass the enemy, they can protect my lord, they can try and take down large troops of the enemy. They have many a possible role. And my lord is Wurzak, who comes with Foot of Gork, which I try to save for stomping on elite troops so I can take them out in one fell swoop. He also has Here We Go, so I can buff melee attack where it's needed. And his net ability can help deal with those large foes too. And then just a goblin big boss to act as bodyguard. So you can see everything here is useful against the Empire, and I'm coming with a plan, a strategy, and tactics all in place ready to deal with them. I'm going to try and overwhelm them with numbers, that's my main strategy. I've got a few tactics like the heavy flank from one side and the old pin and blast combo with the nasty skulker's smoke bomb and the rusty arrows and my skirmish unit's arrows if needed. And the foot of Gork for stomping on those elite units like demigriffs or great swords just to help even the odds against those tougher units. So you can see I've got my army that I've chosen all the units for dealing with the empire with. I've got a strategy and I've got tactics all in place to defeat my enemy. But all of that must be adaptable. It's all well and good to come with a plan in mind of what you want to do, but that won't always be possible because the enemy may have an army that will stop what you're trying to do. So you'll have to adapt and try something else. So how will it fare against empire armies that come its way? Well, you might see something like this with lots of ranged units, three handgunners, three huntsmen, two cannons. That's a lot of firepower to be blasting our way. But as the greenskins, that's of course not a worry for us because we're going to rush up anyway. Their front line isn't great with only swordsmen, so we'll smash through them no problem. A couple of spear units that might try and slow down my cav, but there's far too many of us for them to really be a worry. Two units of cavalry, again, we outnumber them so much, we'll probably be able to take them down with our five units of shock cav and three units of skirmish, so they are not a problem at all. The lord is Marcus Wolfhart, he might try and snipe Wurzag, so we'll have to be careful and watch out for him, but otherwise not too difficult to deal with. This is the kind of army my greenskins will eat for breakfast. But oh shit! What if they brought this army? This has a strong front line of great swords that will smash through my orc boys, no problem. This is where I'll need to adapt maybe my nasty skulkers to bring their armor piercing to the front to help with the great swords, or get some hammer and anvil for my armor piercing boar boys around the back to help with them. Again, not a lot of cavalry, some of it's tough, but our skirmish calves can whittle them down or our cav can take them on. Steam tank, again, we could get our armor piercing stuff on it, our cav, our rusty arrows could shoot at it. We could even get nasty skulkers going for it. So again, no big threats that we can't adjust to be able to deal with in this army. We're going to have to adapt to deal with that stronger front line because that's not what we were expecting, so our Orc boys will need help. But overall, we can deal with it with all the units we have. We still outnumber them significantly. Okay, what about a different look? A cavalry heavy look, a pretty meta army, lots of cheap chaffy kind of infantry, nothing too special on the front line, so we'll be able to deal with that okay. But the threat here will be all the tough cavalry, the Reichsguard, the Demigriffs, the Altdorf Griffites. We're going to struggle to get through that if we take them on one-on-one -on -one with Boar Boys, let's say. There's Karl Franz on Deathclaw as well, so plenty of mobile things to worry about. But we still outnumber them mobile-wise. We've got plenty of cavalry. We've got our skirmish cav that can help whittle them down. We've got our smoke bombs from our two units of nasty skulkers that can slow them down or stop them from getting away. That's really going to help take them out. We've got our foot of gork. We could drop on those griffites if we can get them standing still for long enough or if we can pin them in place. So you see, we've got endless amounts of tools and ways we can adapt our units to be of use against the Empire and the strengths and threats they bring. It's all about using our strength against the enemy's weakness and stopping them from doing the same to us. And choosing the right units to that end makes life a lot easier when trying to win a goddamn battle. And of course, we need to do this with all enemy factions as they're all different. Here's something I might use against the Vampire Coast. I've got lots of goblins as a front line because they got a silver shield, they can absorb the missiles. I've got a lot of fast cavalry so I can get after their missiles pretty quick. Got some trolls so I can smash their infantry. A very different faction to face, so they require a different game plan. Or maybe the lizard men are coming my way. Again, we need a different plan to deal with them. I've got a front line of Black Orcs to deal with their tough front lines of Saurus Warriors or Temple Guard. I've got a bunch of missile units to try and gun down their large units. I've got some nice fast cavalry to get after Chameleon Skinks. I've brought everything with the idea to try and bring down the lizard men. It's a different army, a different faction. You'll require different strategies and tactics to take them down. Is this making sense yet? Hopefully it is. I know there's a lot to take in and I just said about 9,000 words in the space of two minutes, but hopefully you get the idea. But I appreciate maybe some of these armies look very complex and confusing to you. If you're new to the game, they probably will. 
There's a lot of units in this game, hundreds of units to get to learn, so it's going to take some time. But you can start simple. You don't need massively complex armies to put up a competitive fight. An army like this with only four different units, basically, can be just as effective. I've got five units of Orc Boys, a bunch of Boar Boys, some Skirmish Cavs and some Trolls. That's literally it. Very simple, not too many different matchups to think about, and it can fare well enough fighting against the Empire and all the different looks they may throw at you. So don't be afraid to make some super simple armies if you find it's all too much to think about. But that's the important thing. Just think about it before you choose your units to face somebody else in a multiplayer battle. Think about what units will be good against that enemy faction. What kind of plan might the enemy try to bring? What's the worst case scenario? Will you be able to deal with it with your build? Don't just be using units that you think look cool or that you like because they're just your favourite for some reason or another. Pick units that are effective at the job. And remember, this is not campaign. Five units of artillery is a no-go. It's not a good idea. Maybe you might win against a crappy player who doesn't know how to deal with it, but any decent player will take you out to the bins, put you in there, shit on you, and then send the bins off to the dump. <laughs> what? Anyway, I digress about bins. The point is, build well, my friends. Build effectively, build for the enemy. Honestly, there is endless amounts of things I could talk about on this subject, and I'll probably do other videos to do it. But this one is already longer than I intended, so let's wrap it up. Last thing to know is that there is no right way, no one right way, no two right ways, not even five right ways to build an army. There's so many different possible combinations that you could throw together that could be effective. It's just about trying stuff out and seeing what works against a particular faction. If you can face the lizard men and beat them 10 times out of 10 against somewhat reasonable players, it's safe to say that build is pretty good against the lizard men. However, if you keep finding that you're struggling with skirmishers of the lizard men, then maybe you need to add something to the army and change it so that you can better deal with the skirmishers. You gotta find the good balance to accentuate your strengths whilst being able to take advantage of the enemy's weaknesses. And for one special final tip for those of you who watch this video to the goddamn end, try and use more mobility in your army. About 50% can be a good number to aim for, Mobility can be such a powerful tool, especially when it comes to the late game. Being able to move and readjust quickly is a very valuable asset. So there you go. Hopefully this makes you think a little bit more about the building of your armies when it comes to facing different opponents. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the future.